June 19. Jehoahaz rules in Israel. Jehoahaz, son of Jehu, began to rule over Israel in the 23rd year of King Joash's reign in Judah. He reigned in Samaria 17 years, but he did what was evil in the Lord's sight. He followed the example of Jeroboam, son of Nebat, continuing the sins that Jeroboam had led Israel to commit. So the Lord was very angry with Israel, and he allowed King Haziel of Aram and his son Ben-Hadad to defeat them repeatedly. Then Jehoahaz prayed for the Lord's help, and the Lord heard his prayer, for he could see how severely the king of Aram was oppressing Israel. So the Lord provided someone to rescue the Israelites from the tyranny of the Arameans. Then Israel lived in safety again, as they had in former days. But they continued to sin, following the evil example of Jeroboam. They also allowed the Asherah pole in Samaria to remain standing. Finally, Jehoahaz's army was reduced to fifty charioteers, ten chariots, and ten thousand foot soldiers. The king of Aram had killed the others, trampling them like dust under his feet. End of Jehoahaz's Reign The rest of the events in Jehoahaz's reign, everything he did, and the extent of his power are recorded in the Book of the History of the Kings of Israel. When Jehoahaz died, he was buried in Samaria. Then his son Jehoash became the next king. Jehoash rules in Israel. Jehoash, son of Jehoahaz, began to rule over Israel in the 37th year of King Joash's reign in Judah. He reigned in Samaria 16 years, but he did what was evil in the Lord's sight. He refused to turn from the sins that Jeroboam, son of Nebat, had led Israel to commit. The End of Joash's Reign About this time, King Haziel of Aram went to war against Gath and captured it. Then he turned to attack Jerusalem. King Joash collected all the sacred objects that Jehoshaphat, Jehoram, and Ahaziah, the previous kings of Judah, had dedicated, along with what he himself had dedicated. He sent them all to Haziel, along with all the gold in the treasuries of the Lord's temple and the royal palace. So Haziel called off his attack on Jerusalem. The rest of the events in Joash's reign and everything he did are recorded in the book of the history of the kings of Judah. Joash's officers plotted against him and assassinated him at Beth Milo on the road to Selah. The assassins were Jazakar, son of Shimeath, and Jehozabad, son of Shomer, both trusted advisors. Joash was buried with his ancestors in the city of David. Then his son Amaziah became the next king. In the spring of the year, the Aramean army marched against Joash. They invaded Judah and Jerusalem and killed all the leaders of the nation. Then they sent all the plunder back to their king in Damascus. Although the Arameans attacked with only a small army, the Lord helped them conquer the much larger army of Judah. The people of Judah had abandoned the Lord, the God of their ancestors. So judgment was carried out against Joash. The Arameans withdrew, leaving Joash severely wounded. But his own officials plotted to kill him for murdering the son of Jehoiada the priest. They assassinated him as he lay in bed. Then he was buried in the city of David, but not in the royal cemetery. The assassins were Jazakar, the son of an Ammonite woman named Shimeath, and Jehazabad, the son of a Moabite woman named Shomer. The account of the sons of Joash, the prophecies about him, and the record of his restoration of the temple of God are written in the commentary on the book of the kings. His son Amaziah became the next king. Elisha's Final Prophecy When Elisha was in his last illness, King Jehoash of Israel visited him and wept over him. My father, my father, I see the chariots and charioteers of Israel, he cried. Elisha told him, Get a bow and some arrows. And the king did as he was told. Elisha told him, Put your hand on the bow. And Elisha laid his own hands on the king's hands. Then he commanded, Open that eastern window. And he opened it. Then he said, Shoot. So he shot an arrow. Elisha proclaimed, This is the Lord's arrow, an arrow of victory over Aram. For you will completely conquer the Arameans at Aphek. Then he said, Now pick up the other arrows and strike them against the ground. 
So the king picked them up and struck the ground three times. But the man of God was angry with him. You should have struck the ground five or six times, he exclaimed. Then you would have beaten Aram until it was entirely destroyed. Now you will be victorious only three times. Then Elisha died and was buried. Groups of Moabite raiders used to invade the land each spring. Once, when some Israelites were burying a man, they spied a band of these raiders. So they hastily threw the corpse into the tomb of Elisha and fled. But as soon as the body touched Elisha's bones, the dead man revived and jumped to his feet. King Haziel of Aram had oppressed Israel during the entire reign of King Jehoahaz. But the Lord was gracious and merciful to the people of Israel, and they were not totally destroyed. He pitied them because of his covenant with Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. And to this day, he still has not completely destroyed them or banished them from his presence. King Haziel of Aram died, and his son Ben-Hadad became the next king. Then Jehoash, son of Jehoahaz, recaptured from Ben-Hadad, son of Haziel, the towns that had been taken from Jehoash's father, Jehoahaz. Jehoash defeated Ben-Hadad on three occasions, and he recovered the Israelite towns.